Did you really think that that was Mr. Mike? We're not going to draw an acorn today. We are going to draw a tree. So there is a separate episode of How to Draw an Acorn, which you can watch. And I, I would suggest that you do watch that one because with the knowledge that we learn from drawing the acorn, we used these basic lines and shapes to create the acorn. Do you remember that? If you haven't seen it, then you don't remember because you didn't see it. But if you did draw the acorn already, then you would remember using these basic lines and shapes. We're gonna grow that knowledge of making an acorn into a tree. We're gonna use the same basic lines and shapes that we used to create the acorn to create this tree. How is that possible, Mr. Mike? Well, you can draw the same thing using the same shapes and lines. I mean, you could use, I'm sorry, you could use, you could draw different things. Why would you want to draw the same? Well, you could draw the same thing over and over again if you want, but we're going to draw, we're going to draw two different things using these basic lines and shapes. Okay. So we have a circle, we have a line, we have a U and we have an arc. And just with this, we can create very different things. We can start off with our, our acorn over here and we can grow that into a tree. So let's get started. We are going to need some art materials to draw with today. And as you all know, I like to say, whatever art materials you wanna use, those are the best art materials to use because you need to be comfortable. It's always good to experiment with new art materials, which would be nice to try like different types of crayons. We have crayons here. You could use pencils. We've got all sorts of pencils. We've got color pencils. We've got regular pencils. We've got different types of markers that you could use. Um, I am, for today, I'm going to be using these paint sticks. Okay, these are really cool paint sticks. They are, let's talk about them for a second. This is not a paid advertisement. This is just because I like these paint sticks. Um, you just twist the cap off and you can twist this up and this is actual paint this is temper paint and the thing i like about it is it's it's easy to clean up it is not mess everywhere and they uh they dry really fast um and also on you can see let's see here this is a good example on here there's like a little there's an ap on the back of this which means it's an approved product which for parents and, and anyone that's buying these art materials for kids this means it's a safe product to use so look for that AP. I think that's an important thing to know uh, on the back of when you're buying art materials or any like any drawing materials. If it has that AP stamp on it, then you know it's an approved product. Um, so let's let's talk about drawing our tree and why why are we drawing this tree? Well, I just finished this book that's called Tree Mendes, a diary of a not yet mighty oak, and it's written by Bridget Hios. She's the author. And then I'm the illustrator. You see, there's my name, Mike Chicatello. I'm Mr. Mike. Um, and this was published by Crown, an imprint of Penguin Random House. And this just came out in March in uh, 2021. So I was thinking about like my different school visits and stuff that I do. And I came up with a, a lesson on how to draw an acorn, which you can see is one of the videos in the Draw With Mr. Mike videos. But then we add to that knowledge of the basic lines and shapes we create that acorn with and we grow it into a tree. And that's what this book is all about. It starts off with a tiny little acorn and how it grows over time into a mighty oak tree. So we'll take a look at this later. We're gonna look at some of the leaves. Hopefully I'll remember to bring this back and we can take a look at some of the leaves when we get to the leaves on the tree drawing. So I'll put that right over here. Okay, and we're going to jump right in and get started. Aren't you excited to draw today? Yes, we're going to use, uh, I'm going to start with my purple marker to draw. And then when we color, we're going to use, I'm going to use the quick sticks, paint, paint pens or paint sticks um, to draw with, but or to color with. But right now we're going to start off, I'm going to use this purple marker and the purple marker I'm using is, I'm just using this marker because it's easy for you to follow along with what I'm doing. You can see it nice and easy because it is very dark color on a white piece of paper. Okay, so we're going to start off with an arc. And if you remember, an arc, let's see, where's my arc here? An arc is just, it's just a curved line. 
okay that's what an arc is and we're going to start off with that arc right about here on the paper and what we're going to do is we're going to start our arc and it can be any size arc you want it could be a, a deep arc where it goes like this or it could be a shallow arc where it's real like this one that means it's not very tall or it could be long or short and we'll continue making that arc a series of arcs all the way around so we're joining those arcs and we're making small and large all different size arcs and what we're going to do is as you'll see is we're kind of creating this kind of looks like we're starting to draw a cloud doesn't it when the arcs are small and we're, we're this is called varying your sizes because some are large and some are small so we're varying the different arcs making them different a series of them means there's a whole bunch of them one after the other okay so here is our it looks like a cloud and we're not drawing a cloud you may think that we're drawing a cloud of, of course actually we did draw a cloud and when i tell kids this at our school visits that i do that if you draw a cloud, you know, you have the cloud here, we're done. That's the lesson. We just learned how to draw a cloud. No, we aren't, Mr. Mike. It's not called Cloud Mendis. This book's called Tree Mendis. <laughs> we're going to learn how to draw a tree today. So here we have, it looks like a cloud, but really it's going to be the canopy, all the leaves at the top of the tree. Okay, so down here is where we're going to make the trunk of the tree and the branches. So join together with me. We're going to start. We're going to do right here. We're going to do a line down on this side. And then we'll do another line on this side. And then from here, we're going to make the branches go back up into the tree. So we'll start here right at the bottom of that line. We're going to go back up, do a line there, and then another one right next to it. So it looks like we have one branch going up. And then we'll go here, and another one there, and then we'll add another line here. Now we've got our two branches and our trunk. We have to continue the trunk all the way down. We'll do a line here toward the ground and another line on this side toward the ground. And we've drawn broccoli. Doesn't it look like broccoli? It looks just like broccoli. I'm going to eat this broccoli. <laughs> It's so good and good for you. Um, I think what we need to do, we're not drawing broccoli, although it does look like broccoli. We're not drawing broccoli. We're not drawing a cloud. We're not drawing broccoli. We are drawing a tree. So now we're going to add in a ground for the tree to grow from because we kind of did it a little backwards. I guess we should have drawn the ground first. Maybe we should have done the ground first and then had the tree grow out of it, but there are no rules in art. We're going to make the ground after the tree. So we're going to take this U shape here and we're going to flip it over. So it's an upside down U. And we're going to again make a series of these. So it'll be a U upside down and here again and over and over. And we're going to make the grass. So let's start here and we'll make our upside down U and then connect it over, over. Just keep doing that over and over again. And you can vary these as well. You can make them different sizes, large and small, wider, and shorter, taller. Just vary the different sizes because, you know, all the ground is different in different areas. So you may have like a bunch of the same size and smaller ones, and bigger ones. It's however you want to create your drawing. Okay. So now that we have our ground, we have our tree form here, we're going to make a circle right in the middle of the trunk. And I think that that will be a nice little hollowed out circle there that something special could live in there. Now, what could live inside of a tree? I suppose anything we want because it's our drawing. So what are the amazing things that we could come up with? Let's use our brains and imagine what could live inside of a tree. Now, of course, a squirrel could live in a tree, right? I'm going to draw a squirrel because there is a squirrel in this book, Tremendous, and I enjoy drawing the squirrel very much. And at one point, the squirrel steals the acorn. I don't want to spoil the whole book, but something happens. And I think 
that it's it's kind of cool to read it and see what happens so if you have the opportunity you can get it from your local library and like maybe you can read about what happens to that acorn after the squirrel steals it something to do with hide and seek so in our tree or in my tree i'm going to put a squirrel what are you going to put in your tree and i think you should use your imagination it does not have to be a squirrel it could be your cat it could be your dog it could be a slice of pizza it could be an alien it could be a monkey it could be let's see what's something completely out of the ordinary it could be an ice cream cone how would it be how cool would that be if an ice cream cone lived inside this tree so use your imagination and come up with what will live inside your tree for my tree i'm going to draw that squirrel and by doing that i'm going to just add a little little circle here it's more like an oval and then two arcs for ears a little dot for the eye and a smiley face arc there and another little dot for the nose and then I'll just draw two straight lines down. And then I just have to draw another arc here inside to make it look like the tail is there, the fluffy tail. So there's my squirrel and I've added the squirrel into the tree. Now I can, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color around that to make it look like it's hollowed out, like it's a dark area inside the tree. Okay. And we got, this is, this is looking pretty good. So, now, I mentioned that we look back at some of the leaves in Tremendous, and I think that, that would, this would be the right spot to talk about that. So in Tremendous, this tree here is a northern red oak. This is a northern red oak tree that is that we're talking about in this book. And inside, you can see that these this is what a northern red oak leaf looks like. There's all northern red oak leaves, and these are the acorns and the flowers. Um, this is a very complex looking leaf, and we're not going to be drawing this leaf today. That we'll, we'll do, I, I was thinking that maybe we could do a separate episode, maybe in the fall, where we can go collect leaves outside, and then we can try and draw our leaves using basic lines and shapes. I think that would be very fun. But for today, I just want to show you what this northern red oak leaf looks like how it has you can see that there's arcs lots of arcs that join together at points so you can see let's let me get my pointer pencil here and i can i can just trace along this arc here and how it comes to a point and then there's another arc and then you can see that this is a very deep arc here so we could do this outline but we want to do several leaves so for our lesson today we are going to do a cherry tree uh a cherry tree leaf this is very basic um, we're just going to use two arcs to create our cherry tree leaf, but don't worry. We're going to come back to the Northern red Oak, uh, and we're going to collect leaves in the fall when we get to the fall time, because we, then we can look at the different colors of the different leaves. And the beautiful thing about the Northern red Oak is these leaves get nice and red and there's oranges and you can see varied color, all sorts of different color. Um, so I think that'll be really fun when fall time comes around for now. Let's learn how to draw this leaf that we're doing. This is basic leaf that's on a lot of trees, not just the cherry tree. But this leaf is just going to be a single arc that way. And there's going to be on the opposite side, another arc joining it right there. Okay. Now we're going to place this leaf. We're going to do the same thing all over. And we're going to spread our leaves out across the canopy. Okay, to make it look as if there's a whole bunch of leaves, but really you don't have to draw every single leaf. You just have to make it look as if there's a lot of leaves there. Okay, and you can rotate your leaves. You can have them go in any direction you want. And I think you should. They shouldn't all be facing, facing the same way. They should be all facing different ways because leaves go in every direction on a tree. Sometimes they go down, sometimes they go up sometimes they go to the side there's a lot of leaves on a tree and they all do different things okay so you fill up as many leaves as you like with however large or small you want to make your leaves okay and here we go and that's a pretty good amount of leaves i'm going to stop there you can keep going if you want um 
So we have our leaves, we have our, our outline of the canopy of the leaves for the tree. We have the the trunk and the branches and the ground. Let's add some bark on the trunk. And we can do that, you'll see on the sample that I showed you earlier, we have just simple lines. They're all different sizes that go on the tree. So if you just make lines at different lengths, so some are long and some are short, and you don't have to fill them close together. You can do, you can do close together, you can do far apart, you can do different sizes. It's you're just making it look as though there is a bark texture on your tree. So this looks like a fantastic looking tree. I hope that your tree is looking good. Um, and we're going to just finish this off by adding a few uh, clouds. Maybe we'll add a sun and then we're going to color it. So do you remember at the beginning of our drawing where we took a bunch of arcs and we created a cloud shape? We're going to do the same thing, but we're not going to use as many arcs. For these clouds, we'll just do a few arcs, maybe maybe five, um, maybe four, because we're making a much smaller version of that. This one has six arcs. It doesn't, the number doesn't matter. It's just that you're doing them around and making it look like somewhat of a cloud. So you make your arcs and you just join all of them together and they can be all, they can all be different and they should be different. Okay. Here I did four different clouds and they all look different. And now I'm going to make a sun shape. I'll put a sun up here. Here we'll put a circle and I'm going to make some rays coming out from the circle. And if you want to draw rays coming out of the circle, then you want them to all come out from the middle. So just don't push down, but just hold your marker above the center of your circle. Don't touch down on the paper and then move your marker or your pencil or whatever you're drawing with out away from the circle. And then once you do that, place your marker down it could be on the, the edge of the circle or a little bit further away and just draw a line continuing outward. Okay. So that's, that's one ray. Okay. That's just one line and you can do that all the way around your sun. See how they all come out away from the sun directly from the center. So if I took my imaginary line and I'll point with my pencil, came from the center of the sun and I go out like this, I can trace that right back to the middle all the way around. And that's how you can draw rays on your sun. Okay. Now I'm going to put a little smiley face on my sun, two little dots or circles and an arc for a smiley face. And that is our tree drawing. Now this tree may be a special tree in your mind. What tree is this to you? Do you have a special tree that you can think of in your in your mind? Just close your eyes and visualize a, a tree in, maybe it's at a friend's house, maybe it's at the library, maybe it's at your school. Where is this special tree for you? Uh, maybe it's at your house, in your backyard. You can add to this drawing and use your imagination to do whatever you want or make this tree where you want. Now you know how to draw a tree. You can take these basic lines and shapes and you can create more things from it because everything that you see around you is created from basic lines and shapes. So you could add in a school or a playground or uh, a dog or a cat or maybe a lizard. Could be a lizard. Maybe a bottle of ketchup if you want. Maybe a bottle of ketchup lives inside the tree. That could happen. In, in your world, anything could happen. So use your imagination and make this whole scene your own. And if once you do one, you can always do this again. You can take this tree and you can do a whole nother drawing with this tree. So use your imagination and create your little world of what you want it to look like. Let's color. I'm going to, I'm excited about this because I like using the paint sticks to color because they're really fun. Um, we got these for our boys, um, 
and they really enjoy using them. I like them because you can blend them, you can, uh, they dry really quickly, as I mentioned, and there's really no mess, so it's really fun, uh, really fun to use these. So I've got a green one I'm gonna use for the leaves. Uh, sometimes this color, when you put it on uh, a marker, sometimes the color bleeds, so you just wanna be sure you don't press too hard and pull your color, so you can test it out a little bit. Um, you can see here, I'm gonna do a very, I'm gonna be very gentle. But you can see some of the purple came off on it. That's okay. I'm not too concerned about that. I'm gonna draw around the leaves, or color around the leaves here, and just fill in this color. Okay. And it doesn't matter what direction you're coloring in. I'm doing little circles lines back and forth that's what makes these so fun because they're, they're quick and they look the the look that you get from them it's really cool they're really fun to use and like i said by the time i finish coloring in this green it'll probably be dry already which is fantastic because you get to paint without having to wait for it Sometimes painting is, is, takes a long time because you have to wait for everything that you painted to be dry. Waiting is difficult. Uh, waiting is so hard sometimes. Okay, so we've got our green leaves on the tree. and I'm going to use another green, a darker green, to do, let's see here, to do the, um, I think this one is running out. So I'm going to be use this very gently because I don't want it to pop out here. Um, let's see. Yes, I just want a little bit of this color. There we go. Just a little bit. Okay. And... Yeah, one more. Now, say your tree is in the fall. This would look completely different. This could be orange with yellow leaves, or red with orange and yellow and brown and some green still. You could have a very colorful drawing here. Right now, since it's springtime here, I figured all the green leaves are popping out everywhere and everything is just coming up. So I'm going to make this blue sky. This is nice blue sky day for me. If I look outside my window, I see blue sky everywhere. So that makes me, that makes me happy. I like blue skies. And I like, I like rainy days too. Sometimes a nice rainy day is really nice to just sit inside and listen to the rain or sit. If you have a porch and you can watch the rain fall and just listen to it. That's really nice. I love, um, one of my favorite times of year is spring and the special time thing about spring is after a nice spring rain when it's warm out and it rains how it smells after a rain i just love spring rain and how it smells because all the all the flowers are coming up and you get the nice earthy smells and um, you can smell all the gardens and the, the plants popping up and all the color around there's just something so special about that to me i really do enjoy that so here we got our blue sky almost done with that there we go blue sky green tree let's add in some brown for our trunk and if no i only had a dark brown here but if you have a lighter brown you'd still be able to see the bark on on the tree. And this kind of covered up those lines, which is okay. That's fine. That doesn't matter. You can still see it a little bit. I don't know if you can see it on camera very well, but I can still see it here. So you just trust me, it's there. Um, we're going to take some of that light green, light green again, and we're going to do the grass. Color in the light green. And see, this is already dry. See, I'm putting my fingers on it and it's not getting anywhere. So I think this is <laughs> being a parent and being an artist, 
and having kids that love to make art. That's why I love these paint sticks. Um, because then you don't have to worry about all the, the mess getting everywhere, which is fun. Uh, this is a, I've got a little bit of a dirty quick stick here. So I am going to just, what you can do is to clean off your quick stick. You can just take a blank piece of paper and you can just rub it and it'll get all the other color off. So like that's so now I have a clean area here and I'm going to use that to do my sun. Well, maybe it wasn't, I think some of that color looked bled a little bit. That's okay. Still looks like a sun. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to use my silvery gray for my squirrel. And there we go. And now we have a tree. So today we made a tree with the same knowledge that we learned how to make the acorn. So the same shapes and lines that we used to create this acorn, we took that same information in our brain and used it to create a tree. Isn't that incredible? I think that's pretty cool. And there's so many more things that we could create using these same shapes and lines. So use your own imagination. Take your time and draw these shapes and lines out and then see what else you can make with them. I would love to see what you can come up with. And if you'd like to share your drawings with us, color them in. You don't have to color them in if you don't want to. You can just send us the, the line drawing. Go on to drawwithmrmike.com. Go on to our website. And there is a, a spot where you can email us at info at chickatello.com. That's my email address you can email to. And you can send us your drawings and if you if you share your drawings with us just send us pictures of the drawings um, we can we can share them here and we can put them behind us if you send in your drawings or we could, uh, we could share it on our social media page if you like okay we can put it on our Instagram so just go on drawwithmrmike.com and email us your photos we'd love to see what you're drawing and thank you so much for sharing thank you so much for joining us um, I hope you have a wonderful day Bye.